Since the First World War, Tootsie Rolls have been a favourite among soldiers. They didn't melt or crystallise like other chocolates, were simple to ship overseas, and gave soldiers an instant energy boost. They were as adaptable as the soldiers who ate them. These candies caused a great deal of confusion during the Korean War, which many attributed to saving the lives of American and UN forces. But did you know that this sweet treat and the part-time military gadget were created by a 16-year-old? In today's video, we will cover the invention of the Tootsie Roll and how it saved the lives of many soldiers in battle. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video, as we have a lot to cover. Let's dive right in. Leo Hirschfeld, an Austrian confectioner, opened his store in New York City on February 23rd, 1896 at age 16. If you haven't heard of him, you have undoubtedly heard of his work. According to legend, Hirschfeld created the iconic Tootsie Roll in that store which had become a symbol of the 20th century. Shortly after, he merged with Stern and Salberg Co. to make the candies on a larger scale after realising how well liked his invention was. The penny candy was the first sweet to address two confectionery problems. Even though it had the chocolate flavour, it didn't melt and was individually wrapped. Production of the wax paper wrapped treat began in New York City in 1905. Strawberry, watermelon, lemon, pomegranate and mystery flavours have been added to the list of flavours. Other seasonal flavours occasionally appear, including wild blueberry, wild blackberry and wild mango berry. Before air conditioning and refrigerators, summers were spent by candy vendors trying to sell products that could withstand some heat, like taffy and marshmallows. Chocolate in the summer was nothing but a sticky mess. According to candy professor Samira Kawash, who also wrote a book about the history of candy, the genius of Tootsie Roll was to create a summer candy that was a flavour never before seen in summer candies, the flavour of chocolate. Hirschfeld's method for creating the Tootsie Roll's hard but not too hard texture is detailed in the patent for the Tootsie Roll manufacturing process. According to the patent, most pulled candies like the Tootsie Roll are light and porous, however, the Tootsie Roll was baked for about two hours at low temperature. It would then be formed and packaged. According to the patent, the idea was to give the treat a peculiar mellow consistency, to help it keep shape and prevent melting. The Tootsie Roll wasn't that chocolatey, even though the recipe is the same today. However, it was superior to anything else on the market if you have the craving. Additionally, it was affordable, a crucial element in promoting the growth of the candy industry. According to Retroland, when the Tootsie Pop appeared in the early 1930s, it quickly became a depression era favourite. Tootsie Rolls taste like a blend of caramel and chocolate. This is mainly because of the unique method that involved adding gelatin to the candy's mixture before slowly baking it for two hours. Due to its unique creation process, the formula not only had a deliciously distinctive flavour, but also resisted melting. There are other distinctive qualities about this candy besides its difficult to describe unique flavour, which is more like a fusion of chocolate and caramel flavours. While Hirschfeld was employed by Stern and Stahlberg, the gelatin that gives the candy its distinct flavour was first developed. Jello was not the only candy or treat made with gelatin during that era, they were both trendy. This particular gelatin product is used in making Tootsie Roll Pops. Without the patented method, they wouldn't have their distinctive texture that melts in your mouth. Hirschfeld brought this remarkable process to the company, frequently cited as a key factor in why the brand was and is so well liked. Following the war, the Tootsie Pop enjoyed its moment on early television thanks to the well-known commercial starring Mr. Owl and his friends. According to the official Tootsie Roll website, this 1970s advertisement was the first, though by no means the only one, to pose the how many licks query. Even though many other candies created around the same time have become dated, the candy is still available today. Bromangelon jelly powder was one of them. In another article, Kawash claims that Jelly desserts were all the rage at the turn of the century. The only one we can recall is Jello, but in 1900, you could choose from temptations like Jellycon, Trifora, and Broman Jellon. Then came World War II. Food historians recall that conflict as a turning point in the development of processed foods, and the Tootsie Roll, along with other rations ostensibly flavoured with chocolate, was present on the front lines. The US military valued them as a source of quick energy and because they wouldn't melt in hot weather or go bad over time. The Tootsie Roll candy was added to every soldier's field rations, because the candy could hold up in a variety of weather conditions. 
According to the Dodge Legal Group, this provided the candy company with an early vision of a government contract and allowed them to continue producing while the war effort forced many other confectionaries to close. Additionally, it strengthened the Americans' love of the candy. Frederick Arnold, a fighter pilot in World War II and the author of Dawn Ob 5-2, brought Tootsie Rolls on every mission and rewarded himself with a piece after each stage was finished. When his plane was shot down over the Sahara, he said Tootsie Rolls played a crucial role in saving his life. He spent three days alone in a stone quarry and kept going by eating Tootsie Rolls. Later, a native tribe assisted Arnold by giving him some of their raw dog meat, and Arnold returned the favour by giving the tribe a cigarette and a piece of Tootsie Roll. Veterans of the US Armed Forces who are interested in starting their own businesses might not be aware of how much their military education and experience have already prepared them to be innovators. Being an entrepreneur is similar to being in the military. Both rely on risk-taking, resilience and problem-solving to survive. So by this point, we know that Tootsie Rolls are bite-sized chocolate covered toffee treats. The name might be well known to people outside of America thanks to the 1990s dance craze. These unassuming candies have a fascinating past, particularly the part they played during the Korean War, when American Marines were said to have been saved by them. So how did this odd event happen? South Korean police officers and British soldiers battled communist forces alongside American Marines. Chairman Mao gave the order to destroy these troops and sent 120,000 of his soldiers to do it. The Korean War was well underway by November 1950 when the People's Volunteer Army of China joined the fray. This development, which arrived on November 27th via the northeastern Chinese-Korean border, caught US forces off guard. General Edward Almond oversaw US Marines stationed in the Chosin Reservoir area. There were roughly 30,000 Allied troops present, along with the UN troops. Soon after, 120,000 Chinese soldiers, led by Song Shilu, surrounded and outnumbered them. The Marines were surrounded and outnumbered by Chinese and North Korean troops as much as 10 to 1. The more numerous but less well-equipped and trained Chinese suffered severe casualties as the UN troops broke free and withdrew to Hung Nam. The US Marines were left to try to flee while battling sub-zero weather and challenging terrain. When the temperature dropped to minus 38 degrees Celsius, the ground froze, the roads grew slippery, and most importantly, technology and weapons started to break down due to the extremely low temperatures. The morphine sorettes the men were using had to be thawed in a corpseman's mouth before they could be injected because some of the men were developing frostbite. The tank fuel pipes froze over and cracked open in some places as a result which made the US position more precarious. The waves of Chinese soldiers attacking them from the mountain ridges were split apart by the Allied forces using mortar fire. In order to continue fighting, they had to call for a resupply after quickly running out of shells. However, they could only obtain the ammunition via airdrop. The radio operator on the other end of the call didn't have a code sheet in front of him when the commanding officers requested Tootsie Rolls, their code for 60mm mortar rounds. Tootsie Roll candies shipped from a nearby base in Japan floated down to the soldiers instead of life-saving ammunition. The next morning, they airdropped crates of Tootsie Rolls into the Marines. No mortar ammunition, said retired Lieutenant Colonel Andy Trainer. Then, to make matters worse, they also ran out of mortar rounds at this critical time. They requested additional mortar shells because the situation appeared to be looking grim. Due to the enemy side's anti-aircraft equipment being well entrenched, a wait was required. Code words were frequently used at this time to convey requests. The code name Tootsie Rolls applied to mortar rounds. The troops waited until the US could conduct airdrops after the request was approved. They then discovered Tootsie Rolls. True Tootsie Roll candies. Not the highly desired mortar rounds, but the candy turned out to be a blessing in disguise. This event should have been a catastrophe, but cleverness and quick thinking prevented it. Even though they were initially shocked, the tenacious troops used them right away. When they landed, the Tootsie Rolls were solid chunks of chocolate toffee. It wasn't long before the Marines realised they were melt in the mouth. They could use the sweets to soften them up if they were careful. They started using the warm candies as a sealant in their armpits and mouths. The softened Tootsie Rolls were then used as a seal for the fuel pipes by transforming them into a sort of putty. Surprisingly, it was successful. The candy then solidified around the pipes, reinstalling them because it was so cold. The Marines were able to make an escape attempt once the tanks were operating normally once more. After fixing their equipment, the soldiers gathered their hurt and frostbitten comrades, broke through the enemy lines and made their way back to safety. 
the men who survived the battle started calling themselves the Chosin Few, in commemoration of this once in a lifetime experience. The utility of Tootsie Rolls had previously been demonstrated. One veteran, Stanley Cott, explained, I survived for two weeks on Tootsie Rolls. Out of their 15,000 soldiers, the group, who had started calling themselves Tootsie Roll Marines, experienced 3,000 casualties. However, they eventually returned to safety by the sea. The soldiers who battled their way out of the Chosen Reservoir appreciated the small candies despite their size. So keep in mind that Tootsie Rolls are more than just a treat the next time you see one at a parade for our armed forces or on Halloween or Easter. We are always told that eating sweets and chocolate is unhealthy and that they should only be consumed occasionally. But who in a million years would have thought that a shipment of Tootsie Rolls would have come in handy during a terrifying winter during the war? Even though many other candies created around the same time have become dated, the candy is still available today. Leo Hirschfeld should get the credit for saving US Marines or providing rations to World War II soldiers. After all, he was the one who made the candy. Have you ever tried a Tootsie Roll yourself? Make sure to let us know your thoughts below and don't forget to like today's video. Subscribe to the channel as an offering to the gods of the algorithm. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.